What's up everybody, it's the Hardy Construction, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, but most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon, hit that subscribe, hit that like button. With your host comp today, this solo deconstruction is on Beauty Water 2020. Ye Ji comes across mysterious water that enables her to lose weight and reshape her appearance. She finds her life is more in danger the more she desires to be beautiful. Directed by Kyung Hun Cho, based on the manhwa by Oh Song Day. So this actually doesn't say the writer of the film, but Oh Sung Day did the manga and the manhwa, I guess it's South Korean comic books, uh, which are also part of this thing called Webtoons. Uh, the film stars Moon Nam Suk. So I was aware of this film because I'm interested in watching all types of horror, especially animated is pretty interesting. We've seen a couple of good animated horror films here, films like... Um, Violence Voyager, although that's, that's a different type of animation, um, and also what are the, what else did we see? Some, oh, To Your Last Death was a good one too. Uh, so I saw the trailer for this a while back. It's a South Korean film. Had no idea what it was about, uh, but hell, I'll watch any animated horror film, especially if it's done well. And hey, well, I don't know if this one is, but we're gonna get to it. So I've seen a couple of regular, I guess, Korean dramas, especially if you've seen. Uh, Train to Busan, that director. Uh, that's another film that we actually talked about. We did um, um, Soul Station, which was a prequel to Train to Busan. That's an animated um, Korean anime film. And uh, that's by the same director of Train to Busan as well. So Soul Station is a good one. And uh, why I bring those films up is because it's done in a similar sort of computer graphics. It's done with CG graphics, computer-wise. And... Um, it's not traditional hand cell animation. I believe a few sh few images are hand cell animation, but I guess to save time, uh, they decide to do it with computer graphics, which there's a... I'm not necessarily into that, especially if it's a cell shaded kind of cartoon where it looks like... The, the closest thing I can kind of relate it to is anything that was Transformers, Beast Wars, or anything that where it just looks like unfinished art. And unfortunately, this, this looks like that. It looks like it's a video game. Although, my comparison to those other films comes with a caveat, because Soul Station was very good. And this will show the difference between quality of filmmakers. Because since the director of uh, Train to Busan and Soul Station, he did two other really fantastic South Korean CG films. He did The Fake, which I very much... Um, recommend watching and also King of Pigs which I also his, he did three great CG animated dramas they're not kiddie, kiddie films or anything like that they're like actually good South Korean films South Korea has a track record of good uh, thrillers dramas horror films they just know how to make films over there I don't know about this one but uh, I think the lack of budget and the lack of any help really dampered this because I, I watched the film I'm just going to get into the behind the scenes of it I saw the film, and after I finished watching it, I was sort of like, oof. Because to compare it again to, say, let's say Soul Station or King of Pigs or The Fake, there's a level of directing in those films by Sang Ho Young that it takes, a, it takes your um, noticing of the sort of shoddy animation because the characters are very stiff in the way that they move because I don't know how they don't know how to render it's not like Pixar level kind of computer animation it's sort of like this video game style like cutscene character design work and why Soul Station works and why the fake works and why King of Pigs works is because the directing of the film and the placement of the camera and how it all moves around you sort of and the acting of course you lose sense of any of the fakeness of it, you start to believe that the characters is it, exist. Whilst in this film, um, so uh, I'm sorry, Beauty Water, everything has you notice everything's stiff and rigid, and there's just a lack of good storytelling that's going on with this. And it's weird because after I had finished watching this, I was like, I know this is a manhwa. So if anybody doesn't know, manhwa is Korean version of manga, which is Japanese comic books, and webtoons are, I think. I don't know if it's specifically what this is, but uh, webtoons, I believe, are, are for cell phones, so you can read comics. They're, they're, they're structured in a way that you can kind of thumb it up. You move your finger on the screen and the next page pops up, and it's, 
it's built frame-wise for your phone. It's incredibly easy to read, and you can, and it's very popular. And that's why comic books like this, or even um, any any other sort of webtoon, it's 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 its own thing. It's gigantic, and if you want to read Asian comic books very easily, you can look up webtoons and stuff like that. So I read the Beauty Water comic, and it's only about six or seven or eight chapters long, and it was much more entertaining than the film. Like the film is not horrible, but it's not that good and they seems like they there was more going on in the comic than in the film but i guess for pacing wise because the comic is obviously so short and kind of gets its point across within so, so many small chapters that they have to stretch it out for the film and that's when you really start to notice the the drops and the animation quality and the line deliveries are so stiff like you can tell no actor was in the room with each other um, most most likely that's what anime does. Animation does that. They don't have sort of Disney level of actors being able to improv with each other like those bigger sort of production films. And this, they just sort of have you read your lines and that's it. And you're playing how many other characters you are and it doesn't feel like it's natural. So I think that's a big, big detriment to this film. Uh, and especially the directing wise. It's just every Everything is just like static shots and I, you can kind of do anything with a camera for a computer for computer animation right but they seem not to do it here it just seems like this film looks like it's a storyboard for a real film that you just never sh did and to get into the story i'm gonna get into some mild spoilers actually it's probably gonna be gigantic spoilers i guess towards the end and it's very tricky because this is a film that i think will uh offend a large portion of people uh, and uh, it, it's it's not in my lifestyle, um, but I definitely can see you know being a certain type of audience that's being portrayed as a psychopath in this film. I don't know if it's speaking for everyone, but here's the thing with this film that's interesting is that the main character uh, uh, they don't have they don't have the characters' names here uh, just sort of listed, and the and the subtitles that I saw were very bizarre. Like one lady was called Glass. And the boyfriend they called brother, and I was like, "What the? Who subtitled this?" I mean, I I got the I I understood like ninety percent of it, but some of the subtitles were like for names and shit ha made no sense. Um, so the main character is this woman who's overweight and she has eating problems. She's very depressed because when she was younger, she did ballet, and I think she screwed up a routine as a child, and everybody she felt like just horrible after that. And she kind of gave it all up, and she decided to just eat herself into an unhealthy lifestyle. And this is a film that's interesting because in South Korea, a lot of Asian countries, there's a... Well, just like the United States, there's a lot of plastic surgery done. Plastic surgery where it's almost normal. Like, in the U.S., they still sort of goof on people for it. In Korea, it seems to be a little bit more normally and more accepted, as in people tra changing their features to make themselves feel better. And this is a film, well, it starts out as a film about somebody who's overcoming their their low self-esteem and stuff like that, and just how monstrous they start becoming, because there's this there's this uh, MacGuffin or this this device, or not a device, but this, this liquid called beauty water, where essentially you can rub it onto your skin, you leave it on for a little bit, and then your skin becomes almost like putty, where you can carve fat off of yourself and you know structure your face or your body to look the way you want to so that's handled in the first chapter of the comic book and here it takes like half an hour and stuff like that so obviously they're stretching it out as we're seeing they're introducing characters they did a good job about introducing the main character and how shitty she feels about herself and she works for a television station um, I don't know what kind of television station I'm not aware or, or knowledge about it I guess it's sort of like a um, like a HSN, you know, buy stuff from this channel kind of thing, and there she has this bitchy uh, talent that she has to deal with. And there's another woman who is um, fat, who does the clothing, and another guy who's like the talent booker and stuff like that. And so we get a, uh, an idea of who these characters are, and she feels like shit. And one day she decides to try this beauty water, and it's interesting because like, she she ends up getting this, you know aesthetically beautiful face but her body is still overweight and then it's just a pattern of her she gets this taste of almost greatness um where she starts taking the money from her parents like she just keeps asking them for money and she just treats them like shit they're all shitty cat they're a lot the only characters who aren't shitty well they did start out shitty was the parents because they were kind of being nagging to her but eventually they're the only people that sort of are okay and maybe the the fashion the the the, the clothing um 
woman from the from the studio. Maybe she's not bad, but everybody else is shitty here. And, and the thing is, <clears throat> I like that Korean and Japanese films um, to an extent they are good at having complete bastards at main as main characters, but the films are so compelling that you still watch it. Films that I can name off the top of my head are like World of Kaneko, which is a Japanese film actually. Um, <clears throat> really good at having a main character that's just a piece of trash and you follow the film just to see them because they made the movie so good that you're like, I gotta finish watching this movie. Uh, so they, they're good at this. And the fake, uh, the film by um, the guy who did Train to Busan, which has this real piece of shit main character. Oh, man. But the movie was so good, you still watched it, you know? You don't see that in American films. Like, they'll try to find a way to humanize a bastard main character because then the audience, they feel that the audience won't stick with the movie and they'll hate the fucking guy. Well, most of the time, you'll feel like rooting for them to lose. And this character, she's just like a piece of garbage. She's just like, she got pretty and there's points where she's like grateful for it but then she's just she becomes corrupt and all screwy and messed up just like everybody else and while this is all going on she um there there's news of these women who keep disappearing and it might be connected to the beauty water uh there's also the woman who directly is the seller of beauty water we don't know who the who the hell makes beauty water we know that this lady is selling beauty water but it, she doesn't look like she's concocting it anywhere like we don't have any idea of this stuff like there has to be a main company that makes beauty water like what the hell is this lady making how is this one woman able to make all this shit i don't know what the hell i don't know what's going on and then there's this other like really handsome guy that is uh at first off he like compliments the main character on her eyes and he's also talent so you see him interacting with that other rule asshole -ish, um female host that uh you know and seeing them and there's jealousy over there and all that stuff so it's a whole bunch of trials and tribulations with this main character and her dealing with the beauty one and, and it's not a it's not a boring film at all it's just like a stiff rigid sort of uh long-winded stretching out of a very short narrative and if it was a little bit more action to it i think it would fare better as a film so i think it's not necessarily if you it, as a as an interesting watch, I would recommend it, but as sort of a, as a film film, no, I don't think it's good. It, it it literally is like a storyboard for another for an actual film, and they just were like lazy. There's a, there's a laziness to this film that I think hurts it. Uh, the idea is great because it has, re I gotta say, it has some great body horror element stuff to it. Um, but the all in all, it's not strong enough a film. Like I'll remember the body horror stuff because it's great, but all in all, it's not that. It's not that good of a film, and that's what really sucks. But uh, to, as a curiosity, like a, a horror animation, sure, why not? You know, give it a go. I wouldn't say it's a complete waste of time, especially for the ending. The ending visuals are pretty crazy, but as a film itself, you have to go through a lot to kind of see the really cool, like last ten minutes of the movie. So now I'm gonna get into the real big spoilers of the film. So I would say this as a not not really a recommendation, but as a curiosity to check it out. Um, but so let's get into the spoilers in three, two, one. So we find out at the end of the film that the handsome guy that she ends up being in a relationship with is actually a woman who used the beauty water because she was not she didn't think of herself as beautiful as a child. Her sister was always the one getting complimented complimented on her beauty she decided to transition into a man um, and, and she's I believe she still liked women and she just liked piece parts of women um, so it was the first time I've seen I'm sure there are plenty of them but I've the first time I've seen a trans man as the antagonist although the main character is not necessarily a good person herself so there is some weird morality with this film because the main character was such a piece of shit that she gets I guess you know taken over by the psychopath but then you know people got to worry about oh the representation of a trans character and stuff like that I mean, even in the comic book when i went to read the comic book this angle is in the comic book but they put a warning on it like a trigger warning for people who are lgbtq friendly and who are trans friendly and stuff like that and even trans people themselves uh from being offended by this material um so i was talking to a friend of mine who is in the lgbt community and uh, LGBTQA, and I I spoke to her about this um, about how at least now there's sort of normal 
trans representation in in films like uh you know ryan murphy shows and stuff like that and other shows like that and where you can have a trans person as a bad person in a film uh but the things you don't know what the you have no idea what the intention is it's like when we spoke about the um silence of the lambs and having buffalo bill and what that character represented like how they saw trans people back then stuff like that so i can't really speak on this i'm just talking about my viewing of this material and there was obviously a lot of people had issues trans people and lgbt lgbtqia people had problems with that character and i don't know what if this is still in that same vein um as in if it's a south korean thing or if it's just this writer or this director their thoughts of it um, I just thought the character just kind of came off as as psychotic. I don't know if they were psychotic because they were trans or because that's how they 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 portrayed them. I have no clue. But that that was an interesting thing that should probably be discussed with people that obviously know more about it than I do. Um, but it did have uh, as a villain, as this guy was, he absorbed his victims as in like he would put their faces on his stomach and like eyes would be on it which is weird because in the comic book because there she ends up being in a relationship with this guy for like three months and we're led to believe they didn't have any sexual contact at all and i'm like because that's her fiance i believe it's her fiance and then she like takes off his clothes and he, he takes off his clothes and he has fucking faces and eyeballs on his stomach and chest and i'm like this is just sloppy writing like if somebody's been in a relationship for a couple of months, they've had to have sex, I would assume, like adults do usually. I don't know, there's certain maybe relationships that they don't do that. I'm not sure. I'm sure there is, actually. But in this film, even in the comic, you know, there's this weird sort of gag, which I think they did it as a... Obviously, they did it as a joke. But in the comic book version, he, the, pro, the uh, antagonist, he has sex with her, but his penis never goes flaccid. And she's always like wow damn he's hard all the time and the j joke is he used beauty water to take a finger off of one of his ex-girlfriends which had the bone in it and that was the basis of his penis As anybody know there's no fucking there's no bone in the penis but that's that was the joke of it quote unquote so but they never had sex in the film version of it and he ends up actually you know absorbing her with the beauty water she becomes a face on his uh kneecap uh, he already had the face of the other lady on his knee. And so, and it's, and I got to say, those parts, like the images of it are really freaky and cool and shit like that. Um, aside from all the, I guess, the representational stuff, um, he's designed pretty good. Like, all the characters have really interesting designs to them. It's just that they move all weird and wonky in this. Like, they look like, they move like they're an RPG game or something, like a Final Fantasy game. They just move so stiff and weird that it's just like, what the fuck? But the character designs are actually very cool. And everybody has, like, this really good-looking aesthetic to them. It's just that the, the, the shading and the shadows don't match. And, like, the backgrounds are fine, but everything just sort of looks like it's a placeholder for something that they could have done better with. Um, but I did... I, I will say that the, the body horror stuff sells it. It's really good. And if you're just looking for body horror material, they got it here. Especially when she oversleeps in a whole bathtub full of beauty water and her skin sloughs off because her whole skin turned into clay because she fell asleep. And then she turns into this weird thing and her flesh goes down the drain. And I don't understand the parent angles because they give their meat to her. But I don't understand... I don't know what they did. I guess maybe they put on beauty water and took the fat off them. They, they're not very specific. It's just they keep showing up and they're like withered and old. And it's just, I mean, they were old already, but then they were withered. And it didn't make any fucking sense. But yeah, it's just sloppy writing. It's just really shitty writing. I think if they had just stuck to the comic, it would have been fine. Um, obviously, there's going to be issues and people are going to be triggered by watching this. Uh, especially, you know, certain type of audience. Um, but it, just in general, it's just not that very good of a movie. And it, and it, and it sucks because... The idea is cool, you know? It's animated, it's horror, I want to see that. Um, but they just couldn't pull it all together. Um, and it sucks. You know, you want it to work, but I, I can't really say that this worked for me. And it's it's getting, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, two, two kind of lame South Korean horror movies in a row. The Eighth Night and then this. I don't know what's going on, people. We gotta go watch some good movies. But uh, this ain't it. So with that, I would give this movie a 5 out of 10... 
not sleeping with your fiance for three months just so you can not see that they have a, a pair of fucking faces on their torso. And with that, this has been The Hardy Construction. The Hardy Construction.